Hello everyone, I'm Bang Jie from National University of Singapore. I'm really happy to be here, and it was really a long flight here, so thank you for coming to this talk. On behalf of my co-authors, Sean, Zhi Wei, and my advisors, Man Chun and Jun Han, I am now presenting our work on detecting counterfeit liquid food products in a sealed bottle using a smartphone camera. We are actually witnessing a surge in the counterfeit kind of liquid food products, including alcohol, honey, and olive oil. And these counterfeits kind of could cause detrimental health effects or even fatal consequences to consumers. Furthermore, they could also incur significant monetary loss to liquid manufacturers, costing the global food industry 10 to 15 billion dollars every year. Certainly, there are different many types of counterfeits, such as rebranding and mislabeling, but adulteration is the main source of counterfeit. What do we mean by that? Adulteration means that the counterfeiters replace a large portion of the original liquid content with cheaper or potentially harmful substitutes. Let's take olive oil as an example here. Most expensive extra virgin olive oil could cost up to $700, but the substitutes like peanut oil, soybean oil, or corn oil only cost less than $5. To gain economic gain, the counterfeiters usually replace 30 to 50% of the original liquid content. What's scarier, this adulterated content is actually packaged in authentic bottles and sealed to factory standards. Now, Let's imagine that Alice wishes to purchase a bottle of olive oil from a supermarket, and she wants to verify the liquid authenticity before purchasing to avoid health risks. Can you help Alice to identify? What if I told you among these five bottles, only one is authentic? Can you tell? So, you may or may not guess it correctly that instance four is authentic, but you may feel that it is extremely difficult to identify the authentic one without any additional help. So what kind of help can you actually get? There are several state-of-the-art solutions. We have industrial and laboratory liquid testing solutions being optical-based or mechanical-based. But these solutions generally require costly and specialized equipment that you probably do not want to bring with you every day. Also, they require opening of the bottle to take liquid samples. Next, we also have academic proposals which are getting increasingly popular these years. And we have solutions that are utilizing wireless signals. But these solutions require additional and specialized equipment such as an antenna. And we also have solutions using smartphone vibrations, but they generally require opening the bottle to transfer the liquid content into some control settings, such as a paper or plastic container. In light of these limitations, we ask ourselves a question. Can we help an average consumer to detect adulteration in liquid food products without opening the bottles and using only commodity devices that you would want to bring with you every day? Yes, the answer to this question is our work, LiquidHash. What if you could just simply take out a smartphone to take a video of an olive oil, and then the smartphone captures the liquid properties, which is the signature of the liquid content. Then it compares with the signature stored in the manufacturer's cloud to verify the liquid authenticity. So this whole process is very similar to a, ha a software hash checksum verification. Hence the name Liquid Hash. So before going into details of Liquid Hash, let's talk a little bit more on the liquid properties, which is the signature of the liquid content. So according to physics, each type of liquid has actually unique liquid properties. And these properties include density, the amount of liquid molecules in each volume of the uh, liquid, and viscosity, the resistance force of an external object that may experience when moving inside the liquid, and also the surface tension, which is the force acting along the boundary of the liquids. So as these liquid properties are unique, intuitively, 
we can use them to determine the liquid authenticity. But we do have a big problem here. The problem is that we cannot directly quantify the liquid properties. And this is impractical in our setting because we only have an average smartphone camera. We cannot open a bottle. We do not have any additional device. And this is an extremely constrained setup that has limited granularity of information. So what do we do with this setup? What kind of information can we get from this setup? It turns out that we can utilize the bubble characteristics. When I was playing with these different types of liquids, the moving bubbles really caught my eyes. So as you can see in this example here, in the vodka, olive oil, and honey, the bubbles move and look extremely differently. And this is an amazing physical phenomenon that we can utilize. In fact, after some further studies, we realized that the bubble characteristics are a model of liquid properties, and these characteristics include size, shape, and speed of the bubbles forming and moving inside the liquid. Next, as the bubble characteristics are actually derived from the liquid properties, we can then use the smartphone camera to capture it, and then we can use them to infer the liquid authenticity. This is exactly the core idea of liquid hash. However, you know, the bubbles will not magically appear if we do nothing to it, right? So what do we do? To induce the bubbles, we actually do a simple human interaction by simply flip the bottle like this. And then we use a slow motion camera to capture the bubbles in a slower and nicer view, just like this. However, in order for liquid hash to work, we still have to overcome two main technical challenges. What are these? The first challenge is that we have multiple sources of noise when measuring bubble characteristics in each test. And the noise could come from human behavior, such as rotation motion and camera placement. We also have noise from liquid movement, such as inconsistent bubble shapes and bubble trajectories. So firstly, rotation motion is intuitive. Different people flip the bottles differently, and even it's different across different tests. And clap camera placement, uh, different people like to place the camera at different distances and different angles away from the bottle causing varying resolutions and also distortion of the bubbles. Thirdly, we, have, we are observing different shapes of bubbles when uh, arising from random collisions from the air and the containers, and we can define the spherical and ellipsoidal bubbles as regular bubbles. And other forms of bubbles are defined as irregular. In fact, we only want these regular bubbles because they are consistent across different tests. However, even when the bubble shapes are regular, we still have irregular bubble trajectories. And this occurs just after the rotation, when we observe erratic bubble trajectories due to large movement of the liquid. However, after some time, that when the liquid stabilizes, we can get uniform and regular bubble trajectories, and this is exactly what we want uh, because these bubbles are consistent across different tests. We have talked about the challenge in measuring bubble characteristics in each test. Now let's move on to the second challenge in differentiating authentic and uh, adulterated liquid content. The challenge is that we have the difference in bubble characteristics could be extremely minute due to minute difference in the liquid properties. And let's take a look at an example here. So we have 100% olive oil, 70% olive oil, adulterated with 30% sunflower oil. And we can actually hardly see the difference here. And the, this minute difference is very small, right, compared to the large difference that we just observed just now. So it actually requires us to have a fine grain and accurate feature extraction to further distinguish the adulterated and authentic liquid content. So, how can we solve the combined challenges of these two? It turns out that we propose a whole system design of liquid hash to overcome these two challenges. 
So for a video capture, it undergoes the pre-processing module, bubble feature extraction module, and finally, our prediction module. Let's look at more details here. So the pre-processing module aims to select and process frames to remove noise from multiple sources. Given a input video frames, we first select the steady frames. So in these frames, uh, they contain bubbles that are consistent across different trials. And then we do a pre-screen test to validate the camera placement. And the user may want to retry if the test fails. Then we process the selected frames by cropping the bubble regions and then rotating it to align the bubble moving direction with the vertical axis. Then we have the process frames. Next, we have the bubble feature extraction module. It aims to extract fine grain and distinguishable features. For the input process frames, we have firstly uh, segment out uh, bubble regions by utilizing a series of computer vision processing techniques. And then we have bubble tracking. In this stage, we obtain all unique bubble trajectories across all frames. Then lastly, we compute the bubble features to represent bubble characteristics, namely size, shape, and speed. And we also compute statistical features to understand the rotation motion and liquid movement. So this is actually a, simple, a simplified pipeline of our, of our system design. So you can actually refer to our paper for the full processing pipeline. Okay, next. For the prediction module, we use this to decide liquid authenticity, leveraging previously extracted bubble features. And we do this utilizing uh, ensembled machine learning classifiers, specifically adaptive boosting. And to complete the bus, uh, puzzle, we still have one last piece. So sometimes the user may need to flip the bottle multiple times to induce desirable bubbles. However, to further improve performance and usability of liquid hash, we propose a bottle cap accessory. And with this bottle cap accessory, we can have a large number of consistent bubbles. And liquid hash actually works in both cases and it achieves a better performance with this cap accessory. In fact, this is not an extraordinary thing and we are actually inspired by existing bottle cap accessory in the existing products like olive oil and fruit juices. So we have talked about the system design of liquid hash. Let's now move on to how we evaluate liquid hash. So we test liquid hash in three use cases, olive oil, honey, and vodka. We choose these three types of liquid because they are really representative in terms of their liquid properties, namely viscosity, density, and surface tension. We use three instances of authentic off-the-shelf liquid food products. And you know, it's really difficult to get research money to buy vodka. <laughs> then we adulterate them to make eight instances of adulterated liquid content. And we have peanut oil, so, uh, syrup, and soju, as uh, they are very common adulterants in the reported cases. So after that, we package them into authentic bottles. For each instance, we test two detection methods. For liquid hash, we collect data by inviting five participants to perform a total of 350 tests. For our baseline, we choose to have a node assistant method where the participants visually inspect the liquid content. This resembles the real world scenario where the consumers inspect the liquid content before purchasing uh, the real products. In the summary of our evaluation, we have liquid hash demonstrates an overall detection accuracy up to 95%. It is robust against camera to bottle distances and video frame rates. It generalizes across adulterant concentrations and bottle dimensions. Lastly, liquid hash moderately reduces accuracy without using the bottle cap accessory. In the interest of time, Let's focus on our main results, and please refer to our full paper for other evaluations. So for the main results, as you can see from the plot here, we have the x-axis as the different types of liquid, and y-axis as the detection accuracy. 
for the two colors here, red refers to liquid hash, and orange is the no assistant baseline. And on average, liquid hash demonstrates a det uh, average detection accuracy above 90%. And we can also observe a large margin between liquid hash and the no assistant baseline. So we can conclude that liquid hash significantly outperforms the baseline method. So let's take a step back a bit and let's look at how we can actually deploy liquid hash. We envision that liquid hash could be applied in many real world scenarios and supply chain is actually one of them. Liquid hash can act as a proof to verify liquid authenticity and liquid integrity of this product by each stakeholders in the supply chain. They can just simply take and upload the video to the server for verification. Although liquid hash is the first solution to this kind of problem, it has some limitations, certainly. Firstly, for powerful counterfeiters who can try and match the liquid properties, uh, we kind of envision that this performing this attack is actually an extremely costly process, and apart from being it super time consuming. Next, we have opaque materials as the limitation. Uh, this is actually intuitive, but we are actually observing an increasing trend in the usage of transparent bottles. And also, as our future work, which we envision that liquid hash could be, uh, could utilize other sensing modalities to empower it to see bubbles through the bottle. Moving forward, we want to demonstrate liquid hash and use this to inspire the research community to have more novel ideas in utilizing physical interactions to augment computer vision, just like liquid hash. So in conclusion, liquid hash uses smartphone cameras to detect adulteration, and we want to spur novel ways to augment computer vision on mobile platforms. And you can actually visit our website here. All right, so that's the end of my talk, and please feel free to join our poster session this afternoon to interact with us more. Thank you.